Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is covering how to create and use cloth physics and cloth simulation inside of Unreal Engine 5 as it is slightly different to 4. And as you can see in today's video what we're going to be doing is an example of a flag with it also blowing in the wind as well so we'll be setting up the wind in Unreal 2. Now obviously you'll notice I've got one on the right at half mast obviously commemorating the loss of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as of yesterday. So again, that's why I've got one at half mast, just out of pure respect. But this is what we're we'll going over and covering today, creating cloth simulation and physics, which you can see on screen now. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to create our asset for the flag or whatever it is that you're doing. So if I go to Blender, I'll show you what I've made. So I've made a very simple flagpole and a very simple flag, which we have here. Now I exported these separately, however you can do them in the same one. So if I had to move the flag where I want it, you can, oh wrong way sorry, you can export it like this, setting up the flag like this, but I just wanted to do it separately so I can then use the flag mesh elsewhere in my level as well, it doesn't just have to be on this pole. But the code will work the same way if you wanted to keep it on the pole or if you want to keep it separate. The only other thing you need to make sure that you do is if you were to select your flag or the item which you want to have the cloth simulation on you need to make sure you do subdivide it quite a lot. Now you don't necessarily have to do it this many times, but you do need to have a lot of faces inside of this so it does have those faces available for it to actually simulate and for it to move about. Otherwise it's just gonna try and move the whole face by itself if you just had one, whereas with all these individual ones, it will move those. So obviously if you don't know how to do that in Blender, you can select your mesh and press tab to go to edit mode, then press Control R and you can just use your mouse scroll to subdivide like this using loop cuts. Now obviously I've already done it so it's just doing it in between these faces but that is how you do it. Then obviously just export it the same way you normally would. Once you've done that you want to import it and actually I will import one just again. So let me show you that. So I'm not going to import my flagpole as that's just a normal static mesh but if I was to import my flag or again the FBX which you have your cloth simulation in what you want to do is just make sure you import it as a skeletal mesh and press import all as what we want is we want to make sure we have a skeletal mesh but more importantly a physics asset for it. So make sure you do it that way. Again I've already got mine imported so I'm just going to delete that like so. Once you've got everything imported and set up how it should be what we need to do is open up our skeletal mesh for our flag or again whatever it is for you. So we'll open it up straight away like so. In here what we're going to do is we're going to use clothing and that is how it's slightly different in UE5 we now just use clothing. So you might not have that tab like I don't at the moment. So what we're going to do is go to window and then find clothing and select it so it's ticked and it should appear up here like so. What we want to do now is make sure that we give our flag clothing for us to be able to use. So we're not going to add clothing because that will then give us a different skeletal mesh down here. What we're going to do is right click on our skeletal mesh or the section which we want to actually have the clothing. Then create clothing data from section and hit create. Now if you have two different sections inside of your mesh, so you might have the pole as well as the flag, I believe you should have a different button up here called section selection I think it's called and that is how you then also select the right one for you and then right click on it. If you don't have that again just make sure you select it, right click, create clothing. Once you've got the clothing you'll see we have clothing data up here of the flag that which we want. Then we're again going to right click on our flag again and then instead of going to create clothing, we're going to apply clothing data. So apply the one we just created. And for you, it might lose its texture while it's rendering, but for me, it didn't obviously this time. But now we have this set up for cloth simulation. So what we do is up at the top, you have activate cloth paint. We're going to take that. And now we can actually draw in where we want it to simulate the cloth. And to actually start drawing in where we want the simulation, we need to first select our clothing data and now you'll notice our flag has gone all pink and if we hover over it we get this brush here. All we're going to do is simply draw in where we want it to be. So the colour pink means that is not going to be simulating, that will be static which obviously for a flag we do want to make sure we keep some of that so it doesn't just fall down completely. So for you if you've got a pole in here as well you'd want the pole to be pink and the flag to be white. To make it white we can just hover over it, hold down left click and we're going to be painting on the white there and you'll notice again this is white now so that will be simulating physics. What we also want to do is the paint value under tool settings here you'll notice it's at 100. I'm going to set this to a thousand 
purely because for some reason 100 isn't really enough, you'll get some glitches of it not working properly, so you just set it to a higher value, might not need to be necessarily 1000 but it's just a good value to use, and then you do it on, on here instead and that will make sure it does work perfectly. I'm now also just going to lower the radius of my brush to let's say 10, so I can get some more detail getting closer to this bit over here so I don't go all the way off the edge, because that will obviously then mean it will simulate the whole thing and it will just fall to the floor. So going to the edge here, I want to make sure I do leave a little bit of a pink strip on the edge, like so. Now usually flags as well, it's not the whole side of it that is connected, sometimes it's just in different points, so it might be the top and the bottom, or top, bottom, middle, so I'm going to try and simulate that as well. So I can just come in here and just remove sections like this. So now it's only going to be held on in these three sections here. And then to actually simulate this and see what it's going to look like, we can just deactivate cloth paint. So if you press that again, you'll notice it's now going to simulate, looking like so. So this is now our flag simulating, it's fell through the floor obviously because there's no wind, so this is what the flag would be doing. And again you'll notice it's not completely falling as it's still held on in these different sections that you can see here. A little bit hard to see as the flag's gone through it because obviously there's no wind for it to be simulating in, but you can really notice it at the top there. So we've now got our cloth simulation set up. So let's save this and close it. Now if I were to simulate the game, again you'll notice this is working perfectly as I've already dragged in my skeletal meshes into the level, they're already being simulated which is great. But this is a flag so we obviously want wind. Now for you, you might not want the wind and that's perfectly fine if this is for an item of clothing, you might want it to just be as the player's moving, that's fine because that will also work so if I were to try and select this and then rotate it, you'll notice this is actually moving with this as well, it is being simulated. So if it was just an item of clothing for the player, this would work perfectly fine, you don't need the wind. But I do want the wind, so I'm going to go to add up here and then go to all classes, scroll all the way down to the bottom until we find our wind directional source and we're just going to select that and get it into the level. Now you notice this blue arrow here is the direction of the wind, I don't want it to be like that, I want it to be going the same way the flag's pointing, so I'm just going to point it that way like so. Now it'll be going in the correct direction for me. But we also want to make sure we increase the speed and I think around 15 is going to be good. I think I had it on 11 or 12 in the overview at the beginning of the video, but if I just put it a bit higher now for the purpose of the tutorial, I'll show you what it looks like. So if we hit simulate, we can now see we have the flags blowing in the wind perfectly like so, again one at the top and one at half mast in commemoration of the queen. And if we were to lower the wind speed, you'll notice if we put it to 10, we still get the same effect, but obviously less so, so it looks like it's a bit less of a windy and blistery day. Although at the moment in England it is very, very stormy, we've got loads of rain, loads of wind, so it is more likely to be a higher wind strength for me. Let's set it at 20 just to see what that one looks like. Just mess about at this point and you'll notice it looks like this. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do today. What we've done is we set up a cloth simulation and physics inside of Unreal Engine 5, so we can then use this on anything that we want. But again, in my example, it is a flag blowing in the wind. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.